Hi folks, uh, it's good to be with you. We're in part three of the Trinity. Uh, we looked at Matt Slick's booklet article that you can download at Calm's Apologetics. Uh, we looked at FF Bruce's article which you can download. Just Google the deity of Christ, FF Bruce and Ma uh, Marty and you can get that uh, PDF. Now we're going to look at some detail, specific exegetical detail and then we're going to look at the history of the Trinity and, and get some idea of, of that. So history is important and I'll tell you why in a second. So this is resources if you're going to go down to Hyde Park and debate Muslims uh, you can use these resources. Um, so I've got so many so this is an article uh, by James White it's called uh, if you can see there you can get it off Alpha and Omega Ministries and it's very helpful looking the purpose and meaning of ego eme in the Gospel of John in reference to the deity of Christ by James White at Alpha and Omega Ministries. So that, that's what it is there. Okay, I hope you can see that. So it goes into the Greek word when it says, uh, I am that uh, Jesus said, uh, so. For example, in John 8 20, for therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So we're looking at the word I am. John 5, 5, 58. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. In John 13, 19. For now on, I tell you, before it came to pass, in order when it does happen, you may believe that I am. So, it goes into the Greek about what the word I am is means um, and he looks at loads of uh, Bible translations he looks at the history of the church uh, he goes into the Old Testament New Testament so he says this uh, I'll just read this he goes in after looking at the Old Testament and the early church fathers and many other things, he goes, it's not hard to understand why there are many who have not wished to make the connection that John makes between Jesus and Yahweh. One cannot make this, make this identification out of a Trinitarian understanding of the Gospel itself. <coughs> Sorry. It is not hard to understand why there have been many who have not wished to make the connection that John makes between Jesus and Yahweh. One cannot make this identification outside of a Trinitarian understanding of the Gospel itself, as one can certainly not ident identify Jesus as the Father in John Gospel. Hence, if Jesus is identified as Ego Eme in the sense of the Old Testament, Anihu, then one is left with two persons sharing the one nature is God. And this, when it encounters John's discussion of the Holy Spirit, becomes the basis of the doctrine of the Trinity. Exclamation mark. Indeed, many of the denials deny the rather clear usage of ego ime in John 8.24 and 5.58, 13.19 and 18.5 and 6. The final find their origin in preconceived theologies that are nearly Unitarian subordinates subordinationist or enamored with naturalistic rationalism as to be anti-supernatural. So basically what he's saying, he's saying, look, I've looked at the Old Testament, I've looked at the Greek, I've looked at all the nuances of the language, and looking at this, when Jesus says, I am, before Abraham was, I am, that is a reference to Godhood. And anybody who denies it are not doing it based on exegesis, they're doing it because they have a theological or anti-supernatural bias and then he gives some brilliant quotations um, JC Ryle on the I am 
Let us carefully note that a strong proof we have here of the pre-existence and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. He applies to himself the very name by which God made himself known when he undertook to redeem Israel. It was I Am who brought them out of the land of Egypt. It was I Am who died upon the cross. The amazing strength of the foundation of a sinner's hope appears here. Believing on Jesus, we rest on the divinity, on one who is God as well as man. There is a difference in the Greek verb here employed which we should carefully notice. The Greek for was is quite different from the Greek for am. It is as if the Lord says before Abraham has born, I have a, an existence individual and eternal. So I say this, this, this is an article that you can get and do some detailed exegetical study, word study on the word I am. Very, very helpful. Then there is this article, Jesus Claims Deity, by David Miller on Apologetics Press. You can go to Apologetics Press and Jesus Claims to Deity, David Miller. Now this article is excellent because what he does, he takes certain phrases like the Son of Man in John 3.13, the Son of God in John 5.18, and he looks at the background of some key words that are used about Jesus and it's not an easy read because it's quite detailed there's quite a lot of study on these words son of man son of God but it's very helpful so if the Muslim says oh there are tons of sons by the dozen in, in, in the Bible there are loads of sons Adam was a son of God so there was no difference to, to what Jesus, who Jesus was this is very helpful because it, it shows you there are different meanings to the same word so the son of man meant different things in different parts of the bible the word son of god meant different things in in parts of the bible so but when it mentions son of god in terms of jesus it is in reference to his divinity uh, so james jesus claims deity by david miller on apologetics press is a very helpful booklet in doing word, uh, a few word studies concerning the messiah and jesus okay So now, sorry. There we are. So now we're just going to look at the history. Um, the Muslim apologist will tell us that there was no Trinity early on in the church that it developed over centuries. Now, there's a truth to that. There is a truth that over time, theological uh, definition became more and more precise. But I just want to bring your attention to two documents. One is here the early Trinitarian quotes by Matt Slick. All right, early Trinitarian quotes by Matt Slick. This is a two-page document that you can download and put in your Bible and it's very helpful to refute in this argument but then this is 15-20 pages <laughs> uh, earliest Christians taught Trinity dash 50 to 600 AD so uh, the website is www.bible.ca dash h trinity dot atm so I don't know if you can get that there. So I don't know if you've got that on camera. Okay. So you or type in earliest Christians taught Trinity PDF. Um, and this this document it's just got stacks, stacks of information showing you how the early church believed in the Trinity and, it, and it, the intricate research there, someone done a lot of research there, especially on um, one particular uh, early church father, uh, Justin Martyr. The detail and the scholarship on that is incredible. So, so we'll just read a few quotes. Uh, Polycarp. Disciple of John the Apostle, Bishop of Smy 
Smyrena said, O Lord God Almighty, I bless you and glorify you through the eternal and heavenly high priest, Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom will be glory to you with him and the Holy Spirit both now and forever. Just in Martyr, he was a Christian apologist and martyr. For in the name of God the Father and the Lord of the universe and of our Saviour Jesus Christ and of the Holy Spirit, they then receive the washing with water. First apology. That's the book. Ignatius of Antioch, Bishop of Antioch, he wrote much in defence of Christianity. In Christ Jesus our Lord, by whom with whom with whom be glory, power to the Father with the Holy Spirit for ever. I could read more. Irenaeus, as a boy he listened to Polycarp, the disciple of John, and he became Bishop of Lyons. He says the church through He says the church Though dispersed through the world, even the ends of the earth, has received from the apostles and the disciples this faith, one God, the Father Almighty, maker in heaven and earth and the sea, and all things that are in them, and in one Christ Jesus, the Son of God, who became incarnate for our salvation, and in the Holy Spirit, who proclaimed through the prophets the dispensation of God and advents in the birth from the Virgin. He goes on. Um, the heavenly flesh, the beloved Christ Jesus our Lord and his manifestation from heaven in the glory of the Father to gather all things in one and to raise up a new flesh of the whole human race. Tertullian. Um, so the dates, Polycarp 70 to 160, Justin Martyr 100 to 165, Ignatius 98 to 117, he, he died 98 or 117. Irenaeus 115-190, uh, Tertullian 160-215, African apologist and theologian, he wrote in defense of Christianity, he says we define that there are two, the Father and the Son, and three with the Holy Spirit, and this number is made by the pattern of salvation, which brings about unity and trinity, interrelating the three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are three not in dignity, but in degree, not in substance, but in form, not in power, but in kind. They are of one substance and power because there is one God from whom these degree, degrees, for, forms and kinds devolve in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, Origin, 185 to 254. Alexander Theologian defended Christianity and wrote much about Christianity. If anyone would say that the word of God or the wisdom of God at a beginning, let him beware lest he direct his impiety rather against the unbegotten of the Father, since he denies that he was always Father and that he was always begotten of the Word and that he always had wisdom in all previous times or ages, whatever can be imagined in priority. There could be no more ancient title of a mighty God than that of Father, and it is through the Son that he is Father. I'll read that again. If anyone would say that the Word of God or the wisdom of God had a beginning, let him beware lest the direct is in piety rather against the unbegotten father since he denies that he was always father and that he has always begotten the word and that he always had wisdom in all previous times or ages whatever can be imagined in priority there can be no more ancient title of a mighty god than that of a father and it is through the son that he is father conclusion matt slick says if as the anti-trinitarians maintain the trinity is not a biblical doctrine and was never taught until the Council of Nicaea in 325, then why do these quotes exist? The answer is simple. The Trinity is a biblical doctrine, and it was taught before the Council of Nicaea. Part of the reason that the Trinity doctrine was not officially taught until the time of the Council of Nicaea is that Christianity was illegal until shortly before the Council. It wasn't really possible for official Christian groups to meet and discuss doctrine. For the most part, they were fearful of making public pronouncements concerning their faith. Additionally, if a group had attacked the person of Adam, the early church would have responded with an official doctrine of who Adam was. As it was, the person of Christ was attacked. When the church defended the deity of Christ, the doctrine of Trinity was further defined. The early church believed in the Trinity, as is evidenced by the quotes above, and it wasn't necessary to really make them official. It wasn't until errors started to creep in that councils began to meet to discuss the Trinity as well as others' doctrine that were under fire. 
So there we are. And, and this article here, uh, if you can get a hold of this, Earliest Christians Taught Trinity uh, PDF at uh, www.bible.ca dash hate trinity dot htm you get all of this this gives you tons and tons of historical material uh, concerning the doctrine of the trinity in the early church it's very very helpful so uh, we've got one more video and we're going to look at uh, the next video concerning uh, islam and what islam teaches and then we're going to talk about how we can answer muslims and what's the best tactic to deal with Muslims when you're down at Hyde Park or discussing with Muslims. Okay, thank you for listening and God bless you. Don't forget my website, jasonburnspreacher.com. Take care.